Roy, welcome back to the show. Glad to be back. Thank you, Stefan. So it's always exciting in the world of Bitcoin and Lightning, There's whether there's a new country adopting Bitcoin as legal tender or we're seeing innovation in the Lightning uh, network and the associated products and services that are around there. So, uh, yeah, just from your point of view, what are you, what are you seeing? What are you excited about in the space? Well, you know, I've been doing Lightning for the past uh, four and a half years. And every time I, I, I talk about Lightning, it's, also, it's, it's, it's like I am at the beginning of it. Like it's, all, it's like uh, running on a hamster wheel. That's the way I feel. And, <laughs> uh, and yeah, as, as you said, like uh, there's all the things uh, keep moving very rapidly. Uh, the, the things keep improving. Uh, so I'm 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 always excited to be to to see what's next for Lightning. Yeah, and the interesting thing with Lightning is, it seems like, of course, perceptions are subjective. But you could arguably say at the start it was like really really hyped, and then maybe there was almost like a bear period where people were sort of like, oh, I don't know about this thing. And now, it, 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 to me at least, my subjective perception, it's sort of coming back into a bear, bear uh, sorry, bull bullish perception, right? Because we're seeing more Lightning nodes. We're seeing more services turn on Lightning Network and more reliability around payments in the Lightning Network because there was a period where, let's say, if you wanted to make larger payments, the reliability wasn't that great. Whereas now it seems like those issues are being solved over time and things are getting better and better. Um, although, let's say, uh, to really prove this out, maybe Lightning Network needs to have more like targeted or specific attackers and has to sort of resist that attack or uh, move on from that as well to kind of prove prove itself or earn its stripes or whatever we want to say. Um, but I think on the adoption point, I think it's really interesting we're seeing more people who are adopting it, whether that's large, these big services, whether that's Kraken or uh, Cash App and others. Uh, and we're seeing more uh, hobbyist Bitcoiners who are out there trying to teach their local merchants how to take Bitcoin. And I think this is something you wrote about recently, wasn't it? So do you want to yep. tell us a little bit about your experience there and what you're seeing? Yep. Uh, so definitely we see a rise in adoption when it comes to Breeze because of uh, services like Kraken and Cash, uh, which are adapting Lightning. So we see a lot of traffic coming from and to Kraken. We see a lot of traffic coming from and to Cash. And I think these are game changers. And you're right. Like, uh, I don't know if we're in a bull Lightning market, but Definitely, the the new services that are adapting uh, uh, Lightning are raising the bar uh, and 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 uh, providing uh, uh, providing Lightning to to the masses uh, or at least to a larger group of uh, of users. It means that we can't uh, fail on ten dollars or even one hundred dollar payments. So the the bar is definitely higher. Although that if you're in the trenches and like uh, we're in the trenches, you understand that there are still issues uh, when it comes to uh, routing payments, etc. You can drill down on the on ways to improve that uh, later. Uh, but uh, we see more and more users coming from mainstream audience using Lightning. And as you said, we see more uh, mom and pop shops. So we, we see more local merchants using Breeze in order to accept Bitcoin in their businesses. Uh, specifically, I think the article you're referring to was around a company called Ellen Casa. Ellen Casa is a, is a service company in Helsinki that is solely based on the Breeze point of sale, meaning they use the Breeze point of sale uh, as the interface to accept uh, Bitcoin. And they're, they're working with local merchants in order to push lightning adoptions in, 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 in pubs, bars, uh, and local, local businesses in the, in the Finland area. Right, and that's definitely a really interesting part because part of the the magic of bitcoin if you will is this ability to just quickly spin it up even on a phone you just download the app and then boom you're enabled and you can just use bitcoin and lightning straight away and so i think that part is really convenient and obviously from a merchant perspective having the pos mode inside breeze makes that very convenient for them and i think it'd be great also just to chat around any practical points of implementation right so as an example let's say i'm a merchant and i have a range of products 
can I, you know, have like a CSV with a product catalog or can I, how do I deal with having staff who are accessing my, you know, the Breeze terminal? Yeah. Uh, so it sounds uh, really simple, right? Just download an app, uh, switch to point of sale mode and start accepting bit, uh, payments. The, the reality is uh, a bit more complicated, but uh, fortunately we have a, a set of features that allows a business really to manage uh, their, their, their inventory, ma- manage uh, the, the accounting using the, the capabilities that we bring to them in a non-custodial Fashion. So everything that we do in Breeze is in a non-custodial uh, fashion, and that's also the the challenges. All the challenges are, are are stem from the fact that we are providing a non-custodial service. So it's not like there's a central service, a central uh, SaaS uh, solution that provides you all the things that you need. Uh, you need uh, some manual work because the data is yours. The payments are yours, the Bitcoin is yours, and we can't do the work for you. You need to do some of the integration when it comes to managing your business. So if Square uh, made a revolution bringing, uh, making, by by, uh, realizing the fact that everyone can become a merchant using their mobile device, Breeze, in Breeze, you can even be a merchant with a mobile device, but you also don't need to have a bank account. All your Bitcoins is yours. When you download Breeze and you start accepting Bitcoins, you don't need an account anywhere. It's it's your Bitcoin stored in your Breeze. Uh, uh, so Breeze, when it comes to merchants, has a, a several features that helps you uh, manage your, your, your payments and your inventory and your accounting. Uh, I'll go from, from the trivial one, which is the point of sale interface. So unlike a, a regular wallet uh, where the interface is not really a keypad uh, where you can, uh, you can add, uh, add, uh, add products to the, to, to the invoice, in Breeze, uh, you have a key, keypad-like interface where it's very, like a calculator where it's very easy to, uh, to check out. It's very easy to, to create an invoice. Uh, by adding multiple products. Uh, alongside the keypad interface, we have an item uh, items uh, view where uh, merchants can import their inventory into Breeze, meaning you can have a, an items catalog. Let's say you're, you're selling hamburgers. So you can have your uh, various hamburgers, you can have the, the drinks, you can have all the related, uh, all the related inventory uh, to your business displayed very nicely in the Breeze interface. So you don't need to t- to even enter the amounts. Just pick the items and the number of items, and and just ring up the customer. That's another that's another feature, and that's uh, an end user features. For from from the backend standpoint, we have several features that are. Uh, uh, that are targeting uh, businesses and, and small merchants. One of them is the ability to export the transactions into a CSV file because we don't know how to uh, do your taxes. So we don't know how to integrate <laughs> the breeze, the breeze sales into your accounting system. But we do allow you to export all the information that you need in order to integrate the payments into your accounting system. And recently we even added the, the fiat amounts. So, so uh, up until uh, two months ago, we didn't uh, export the fiat, uh, the fiat currency, uh, meaning uh, typically the, the customers are being charged with a dollar, but the, the, the billing is in Satoshis. So the settlement is Satoshis. And we didn't uh, list the, the fiat amount that the, the, that the transaction occurred. And uh, now we added the, the fiat amount, which makes it easier to do the integration. You don't need an external Oracle or external data source in order to, to bring the fiat values. Uh, 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 alongside that, we've added also sales reports. Sales reports is really a really cool feature where, where you can see what's your total amount of your daily transactions, what the total amount of your monthly transactions, what the total amount of your yearly transaction. So these reports also help with accounting and also uh, helps with end of day settlement. So for example, if you're in a restaurant and you give breeze to your waiters, uh, uh, the, the, the way to settle the, the, to settle the score by the, the, the end of the day is to see how many purchases were made and what was the, the, the amount that each waiter has, uh, uh, has billed. 
And, you, and now with Breeze, you can do that very easily. You don't need to manually add the transaction. We give you a sales report uh, in a very nice uh, slick user uh, interface. I, I spoke, the, I spoke about, about waiters. Uh, if you want to give Breeze to your employees, uh, you, we have a way to, for Breeze only to receive funds and not to send funds. So you have a mode, we call it uh, 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 admin password or manager password, sorry, manager password, where you can set a password that only using this password, you'll be able to send funds from Breeze. If you don't have the admin password, if you don't have the manager password, you can only receive funds. So if you, you, can, you can have like a read-only mode for, for Breeze. And that's also very, very, very helpful when it comes to, uh, to, to a merchant that has employees. Yeah, so it's interesting and good to see there's all this tooling and feature, features that are coming into the app that makes it easy for people to take payment in Bitcoin. Like you said, with the <laughs> accounting aspect of it, right? It, historically, if they were just showing, oh, it was a thousand sats and two thousand sats or however much, well, you need to figure. They would need to calculate what was the fiat value at the time of that uh, transaction, and so then the accountant or whoever is doing the taxes and etc. Uh, just the accounting will be able to take that data and put that into their system to obviously calculate. Okay, profits, losses, taxes, etc. Um, all that stuff. And so, yeah, I, I think it's really good to see that there's new features and functions coming in, and we are. I I think we're seeing more and more real world growing that network effect and as you said like with that uh, LN Casa in fin Finland going around to different uh, local businesses and I think this is something that people should be doing just in general like if you if you have your local Bitcoin meetup you guys should all be out there thinking hey where can we go and maybe get yeah. a merchant to accept Bitcoin and set him up on Breeze set him or her or whoever up on Breeze and then Go you do your meetups there, and then buy drinks there, and whatever. So that maybe that's like another way where obviously every Bitcoiner loves to uh, sort of if you well as long as you're comfortable spending, it's uh, good to have that, and th this can then become like your little home base, and then you can slowly grow grow the scene in your local area. And I think it really is about this kind of bottom up idea as opposed to a top down idea. Uh, of course, that top-down approach can, you know, we've seen that in other countries, right? El Salvador, Central African Republic are doing this from a top-down, well, sort of in a top-down way. Um, but I think that bottom-up is really the important part. I, I think both are important. Uh, everyone can should contribute wh wherever they can. So I think, uh, by the way, take a look at Oshi, for example, another great example for uh, for a bottom-up approach where they they created this very cool, I would say, marketing app where you get uh, rewards on using bitcoins, and they're going and onboarding local businesses to their platforms. I think. I think there's a lot to do uh, when it comes to the bottom-up approach. Uh, Breeze is definitely a tool, but not only Breeze. Like if you can, if you, you want to use BTC Pay Server, if you want to 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 use Oshi, if you want to use a bit refill, like there's a lot of uh, space uh, at Steco, for example. If you want to to convert your uh, local uh, kiosk, uh, your, your local con convenience store to uh, to to enable them to buy uh, Bitcoin vouchers, you can do that using Azteco. So there's a there's a set of tools right now, uh, which keeps growing uh, by, by the day, where where you can really enable this bottom up approach and. Uh, top down is important as well. Like I, I, I think that what we're doing with the merchant is maybe uh, bottom up, but what we're doing with podcasting. Uh, 2.0, for example, it's kind of a top-down approach where we say, like, we have these platforms. It's not up to us. It's not up to Breeze to go out there and start uh, signing uh, the, the podcasters, but uh, it's up to the podcasters themselves to uh, to list themselves in the podcasting 2.0, the podcast index uh, platform. Uh, and, le and then we have a peer-to-peer -peer compensation system where listeners can send sets to content creators. Uh, so I think both are, are important. Yeah. And I think the other aspect of it is that nowadays with Lightning growing and maturing to a level where it can handle this sort of thing, whereas if we were trying to do all this back in 2013 and 14, like there just wouldn't have been enough, uh, 
you know, you, we, we would have just spammed the chain with all these small transactions. Well, not spam because they have transaction fees, but you get the idea, right? Like pretty soon it's going to fill up and, you know, it's not going to be capable. Whereas in a lightning world, we can do all this stuff off chain and really save chain space. And so I think it's really fascinating to see that. And what we're seeing now is making it easier for people to stay off chain. Um, and so I guess going to that idea as well with Breeze, the part of the idea is you're using swap in and swap out features or providing that as a, you know, this idea of LSP, right? Lightning service provider. So uh, actually on, on that as well, I was playing around with Breeze obviously for this interview. And uh, is there like a, like a maximum amount that you would recommend people have in Breeze? Is it around 4 million sats or around there? Or the, how, how does that work in the case of a merchant who might, who maybe, maybe they need to do a little bit more than that? How does that work? We, we actually have a hard uh, cap of uh, 0. 0.4, 0. 0. 0.04 uh, Bitcoin, meaning 4 million Satoshis. Uh, that's what we recommend. That's what we feel comfortable right now. That's what we feel that is uh, useful in liquidity-wise when it comes to receiving lightning payments. Uh, whenever the merchant uh, hits the, the cap, they can swap out to the chain. Uh, and I then see. all 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 the channels are empty again. They have enough. Uh, they have uh, four million satoshis of inbound liquidity again. So I think uh, that's the and 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 like we're very open to feedback and we're listening to the market all the time. We actually raised the limit for from one million satoshi to four million satoshi. Maybe we now with the uh, Bitcoin price drops, uh, maybe we need to raise the limit again. But like that's the that's the order of magnitudes where what where what we yeah. feel comfortable is for sure and so then part of the process if you are a bitcoiner out there trying to teach and help your local merchants or even if you're a merchant thinking how do i how do i do this well you have to think about the life cycle of it as well right because you you might receive and then now you might need to go and sign up at an exchange or either find a peer to peer person and you know what, for some local, for Bitcoiners who maybe they want some non-KYC coins, maybe you could offer to help set up a merchant and then you could offer them, hey, once you've received enough sats, let me buy them off you. I'll pay you cash and you can, uh, you know, that might be another way. Um, or otherwise that merchant could obviously sign up with, you know, one of these lightning supporting exchanges. And then that way uh, it's easy to swap in and out or to sort of, uh, let's say once your 4 million capacity is getting filled up, okay, go to the exchange, sell that back for fiat. And then obviously if you're a business owner, you've got to pay your expenses, but that can be part of the flow. And this is all part of the, the learning, right? Or send it to your hardware wallet if you want to retain custody. So I think all the options are, the ta are on the table and, and you need to do what best for your business and for you. Uh, I think uh, in some way it's like uh, where you take all the cash from the cash register at the end of the day and put it in the safe, right? Uh, uh, so the question if you have a safe uh, at your business or or do you decide to deposit the the, the, the cash in in a local bank or or uh, so what the same way that you treat your cash in in in, in your business in, with fiat that's the way that you tr need to treat your Bitcoin. Bitcoin, of, of course, enables you to keep a, a very large amount of Bitcoin in your hardware wallet without uh, without uh, needing a very large uh, safe. Yeah. And so I think part of it also is growing this network effect so that people see that it's a real thing, that there are real businesses around them, that they can spend their Bitcoin or earn Bitcoin, and that the merchants can see, hey, I can actually earn some Bitcoin here. And maybe they can lean into the whole Bitcoin culture a little bit, and then it becomes a bit of a self-reinforcing cycle. So in the article as well, and I'll put that in the show notes, uh, listeners, you can check the description. Um, but there are some examples of a local bar, uh, even a martial arts, like a BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu place that are taking Bitcoin. And so if you're growing the scene in your local area, then you start to have more places that you can actually spend and receive Bitcoin. And so I think that really makes it more real for everyone. And, and that's one of the like the, the recurring feedback that we get. Like we have a lot of mainstream users that are being newly onboarded from Kraken and Cash, and now they're asking us, "Okay, I have this uh, uh, this amount in my uh, Breeze. What, what can I do with it?" Uh, so we send them to our apps check section where we have uh, BitRefill and uh, LN Pizza and other other services, other online services, but. 
like it would be amazing if they could go with Breeze to their uh, local uh, uh, to 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 the shops in their local area and start buying products with Lightning, and that's the way we complete the circular uh, economy. Uh, so yeah, that's the next step. But we need a lot more foots on the ground and a lot more Bitcoin soldier, soldiers to make it happen. <laughs> so yeah, if you're out there at your local Bitcoin meetup, go and uh, get busy. Um, so Roy, let's chat a little bit about updates with Breeze as well. So uh, as I understand Breeze, uh, I don't know the current situation, but it looks like you might be switching to like a green light infrastructure as well. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about that if you're able to? Yeah, of course. Uh, very exciting. Uh, I, I think the product that we're working on, we're adding it. Uh, we're not switching. Uh, on top of our offering, where uh, you okay. using B Breeze, you run a, a, lock, a, a node, a lightning node on your mobile device with green light. Greenlight is for for those who don't know. That's the cloud infrastructure from Blockstream that enables that that allows you to run uh, your node in the cloud. So it's a platform for, for running users node on, on the cloud, but it's a hybrid approach, meaning the user node is on the cloud, but uh, the keys are on the device. So the, the, the keys are stored only at the user. They're not stored at the cloud and the, and the cloud only hosts the node, but in order to send and receive transaction, you need the keys. So it's still non-custodial because only the user, uh, only the end user uh, has the keys and only they can send and receive uh, transactions, authorize sending and receiving transactions, but the note itself runs on the cloud. And, and by leveraging the green light infrastructure, that will allow us to be more scalable. What do I mean by, by scalable? I mean, Breeze right now, it's kind of an Omni app, right? You open Breeze. Uh, first, I don't know even how to define Breeze. Like I don't call Breeze a wallet. And with the podcast uh, interface and the point of sale interface, I don't know what to call Breeze. Uh, so when we switch to a green light, uh, to a green light architecture where the user node runs uh, in the cloud, then we'll be able to spin off all the different experiences that we have in Breeze to different apps. So the point of sale can be a separate app. The podcast player can be a separate app. Uh, we have, uh, we have ideas for additional lightning apps that we want to build on top of this uh, Breeze uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. Uh, uh, so it's a, it's a self-custodial model, hybrid model, but it allows us to scale Breeze to multiple applications and it will also enable us in the future to do two more things. One is to uh, get out of mobile, meaning expand beyond, beyond mobile and even develop web applications. Uh, and uh, secondly, it will allow us to package all the Breeze infrastructure in a form of an SDK. So imagine, imagine uh, someone wants to write a non-custodial lightning uh, or to add lightning monetization to their own application. They will be able to use the Breeze infrastructure. Uh, let's call it the Breeze SDK uh, that package all, all these services into, into a very uh, simple toolkit. They, they would be able to take this toolkit, integrate the toolkit into their own application, and then have non-custodial lightning monetization within their apps. Uh, so I think uh, we, we wanted to find the scalable uh, architecture where we con could provide what I call lightning as a service. And, that's, and, and it's not just lightning as a service, it's a non-custodial lightning as a service. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's where we headed. And I'm very, very excited about where, what the future holds for us. I see. So currently, users are operating using uh, Neutrino. And so they are operating, I guess, a mobile node. Uh, and so in the green light model, then they will be using the cloud node. But they'll, you know, on their phone, they're still holding the private keys. And they will still kind of be able to remote control that node in a way uh, using Breeze as their interface for the lightning network yes. uh, you could say exactly yeah. And, uh, yeah. and the keys are still on the device so the keys are still on the user mobile, mobile device and the users are the entity that authorize or uh, technically signing the transactions 
Right. And so, uh, listeners who are interested as well, you can check out the earlier recent episode I did with Christian Decker talking about green light. So that's episode 378. I just looked that one up. Um, and so, yeah, I guess this this allows a, a really, uh, you know, a, a change and an improvement in the experience while trying to manage this hybrid experience for the user. Because I think maybe that was also one of the challenges in years gone by when people were trying to do everything themselves. They had to manage their channels then they had to think about incoming liquidity and then they had to sort of manually manage all of these things. And now what we're seeing is this sort of new crop of apps that sort of come out that put out put all of that in the background. You just use the app. Um, and so in this example then, like how does uh, the... And 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 Greenlight is that, so yeah. so so yeah I I, th- I think you yeah, that's exactly right like uh, it was uh, first when Lightning started is it was all about run your own node create your own channels manage your liquidity the next step in the evolution what actually what uh, Breeze brought to market is, is the LSP concept where you had a liquidity provider that uh, managed the channels, obfuscated all the channel management from end users and managed the channel seamlessly uh, in the background. That was the LSP evolution. And now with Greenlight, actually you get all the infrastructure as a service. So you get the, the user node also as a service, the LSP and other services like fiat conversions and, and uh, mobile notification. So you get the entire entire stack as a service. Uh, Greenlight is one piece of the puzzle. LSP is another piece of the puzzle. A swap services uh, is another important building block. So there are several building blocks where we can now package into, into a, a streamlined service. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so it's, it's in a way, it's slow and there are various trade-offs, obviously. You know, your device needs to be online and it's not as quote unquote simple as just putting up a Bitcoin address, but there's some big scalability wins there because we're now taking it to a much, making it more accessible. Many, more, many, many more people can use Bitcoin without having to sort of uh, do everything on chain, which is unfortunately not just simply not going to scale, right? And I think it's yeah. interesting because in this space, we have this, you know, not your keys, not your coins is the ethos, right? It's all about self-custody. But at the same time, we it's awkward because we also have a lot of custodial users. And maybe that's like an ugly truth, if you will, of Bitcoin today is that there's a lot of custodial users on various custodial platforms. Uh, and of course, we want to do everything we can to make it easy for people to self-custody. Um, but recognizing that there'll be some users who just won't. Um, but I think Breeze exists as a way of making it easy for them to self-custody. Uh, yeah, I'll even be like, I'll say it more explicitly. I think the future of Bitcoin is non-custodial. If we we'll, won't be able to bring Bitcoin to the masses in a non-custodial fashion, then we've failed. And there's no reason to do Bitcoin. The only reason we're doing Bitcoin because it's peer-to-peer money. If we won't be able to realize Satoshi's vision of of uh, of, of peer-to-peer internet cash, then we've failed. Uh, so the only the only reason to do Bitcoin is because we want to provide a peer-to-peer cash because we want to peer provide peer-to-peer economic, and and that's what we strive to do. Like that's the that's what that's why we're doing what we're doing. And Lightning, if we want to bring Bitcoin to eight billion people, then definitely Lightning is the way to do that. And if we want to do Lightning, we need to keep Lightning uh, non-custodial. If we want to 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 do Lightning non-custodial, it isn't really it's it doesn't really scale if you tell all your users to manage their own nodes. So we need to simplify that. We need to to transform Lightning from a very tech savvy IT operation to something we can provide as a service. So that's where we headed. Uh, and we started doing that with the LSP, but we'll continue to do that with the entire Lightning stack. Yeah. And I think uh, the other part of it is seeing all the protocol improvements and updates and things that are coming as well. So uh, I'm curious, Roy, if you have any thoughts on what's going on at a protocol level, what, what's exciting for you, uh, what are you looking forward to, and, or even what do, you, what do you see that needs improvement? 
A great question. I think the what's important for me, and I'm representing the again the non-custodial lightning, and what what our users want is uh, offline payments, meaning the ability to receive. I think that. I think like our mission is to provide the user experience that is on power with fiat. Uh, custodial Lightning kind of provides something that is on power. Like if you take a look at Strike or take a look even at uh, Lightning wallets like a Wallet of Satoshi, uh, they provide an experience that is kind of similar to what you you can find in the fiat world with cash and Venmo, etc. Uh, Non-custodial Lightning is getting there with the LSP and all the concept, all the all the user experience concept that we bring to market. But uh, one 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 po- point where of friction that where we can't provide really right now the same service that non-custodial solution uh, has to offer is the have to offer is the o- uh, offline receive. You've mentioned Lightning address in Breeze. We can't give our users Lightning addresses. Why? Because in order to receive funds, the application needs to be opened because it, we need your node to run and you need to sign the transactions that you receive if you want to receive funds. Uh, so it's not like in, in, in the on-chain world where, where you can broadcast a transaction and the transaction is recorded uh, in the chain. And it's not like in the custodial service when someone sends you funds to your custodial environment and then you receive uh, you receive the funds, uh, someone else receive your funds on your behalf. In a non-custodial environment, you need uh, to uh, to be online in order to receive funds. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to is the way to resolve this uh, asynchronous payment. Uh, offline is actually enlightening asynchronous uh, payment. We need to, a way for someone to send funds and for you as the uh, is the pay to receive the funds later. There are several protocol improvements when it, it comes to that. A, a shout out to, to Matt Corello who's promoting uh, solutions to the async uh, uh, payments flow. Uh, one of the things uh, that helps in order to resolve that is the use of an LSP uh, as a way to hold the payment. Uh, so there are, there's, a, there's a way uh, that is coming where you, as a, as a sender, you'll be able to send a transaction and the transaction will be held at your LSP until the pay is back online. And the pay will be able to communicate with your LSP in order to say to, to your LSP, I'm, I'm, I'm online now, send me the payment. And then the, 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 and then the LSP, the, the payer LSP will be able to send the payment to the to its destination. Uh, so there are several protocol improvements that uh, that uh, are, are needed in order to implement that. One is the ability to do uh, hold uh, to hold the HTLCs. Uh, uh, you need trampoline payments because the LSP needs that's going to be the entity that's going to actually send the payment and retry uh, various routes in order to send the payment to the destination. Uh, onion messages are required in order to do this uh, cross node uh, communication. Uh, when we'll have these building blocks of uh, trampoline, pay- trampoline uh, nodes, uh, when we have the capability uh, to hold and release the HTLCs, and when we have uh, the communication infrastructure using onion messages where you can coordinate uh, the payment, then we'll be able to, prov- to, to provide offline payments, not really offline, but asynchronous payment. And that, I, I think it's the biggest barrier between non-custodial and custodial user experience to date. So I'm very, think, yeah. very excited about that. I, I can talk about it all day long. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, certainly, I think that part of it's really interesting. And definitely, I see the the use for people there who maybe they want an easy way to be able to take donations and things that's just online to their Lightning address. Uh, now, one criticism I've heard is this idea with, say, HODL invoices is that it's locking up liquidity across the network, and that's maybe the, the criticism of this. And pe- perhaps what you were saying is maybe this idea is it would be restricted only into certain cases where maybe, let's say, an LSP is the one doing that at the last hop or the last step, um, that sort of last mile, if you will. Um, how, so how do you see it's, that? It's kind of the opposite. Yeah. So, yeah. Great, again, yeah, that, that's, I'm not talking about uh, it's, uh, yeah, they, they, it. 
I'll, I'll explain. So when we came out with this asynchronous uh, payment uh, uh, proposition called the Lightning Road, uh, which uses HODL invoice, then you're right with your criticism. Then uh, every payment will uh, require locking the transaction, locking the HTLCs for every hop in the route. Uh, the improvements I'm, I'm, I'm referring to, uh, which is using the payer LSP, not the payer oh, LSP, me meaning the funds are only locked at the first hop between the user and its LSP. So just a single gotcha. hop. You don't, you don't lock the, the, the HTLCs along the, the, the route, just at the first hop, which makes sense because the user send a payment. So he wants, they want to lock their funds. Uh, uh, and it's up to the LSP. The LSP becomes the road, the lightning road. And it's up to the LSP to coordinate the payment. And using Onion messages, uh, they will be able to know whether the pay is online or not. So it's an gotcha. optimization of, the, of our initial proposal. And again, shout out to, to Matt Corello who Matt figured Carrello, this yeah. out. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so then, as I understand, then, uh, as an example, let's say uh, I'm, you know, I'm using this service, I go offline for a few days, maybe I'm hiking or whatever, and then I come back online. And the idea is my, let's say my mobile wallet, let's say my Breeze can maybe communicate back to the LSP on the payer side and say, hey, I'm ready to take that payment, forward it to me now. And then at that point, you're saying the payment would exactly. be forwarded through. Right. Executed. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. executed. Yeah. And so, yeah, so then um, that kind of helps that use case as well, because I could imagine uh, right now people who are really into Bitcoin, yeah, they'll deal with all these things. But let's say that person maybe one or two layers out in the onion, let's say, the person who is uh, not that into it and just using it neutrally as a tool, right? And, you know, as uh, uh, my friend Sergey Kotliar of BitRefill made a good point, he was saying, you know, there are people who use BitTorrent without necessarily calling themselves part of the BitTorrent community. And, you know, mm -hmm. they just use it neutrally as a tool. And so in the same way, uh, if we as a Bitcoin and Lightning community can make tools available that are usable by people who are not necessarily hardcore Bitcoiners, and they can just neutrally say, oh, hey, I just downloaded this app, I install this, and now I've got a Lightning address, and now people can just pay me to this Lightning address. Exactly, exactly. So it's all about bringing Lightning to the masses. I, I don't think the masses care about, unfortunately, they don't care about custodial, non-custodial. They don't care about uh, open, permissionless, uh, 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 borderless uh, solution. They care about uh, sending and receiving funds. Or they care about, uh, I, I see Lightning as, as really peer-to-peer -peer internet money. So I, I really see it as a way to integrate monetization into existing solutions, into existing applications. So you don't really care about uh, Bitcoin. You care about, the bit, about Bitcoin as a utility. Applications provide utility. Users want utility. That's what we know. Uh, by the way, it, we, we saw that in Breeze. Whenever we add a new utility to Breeze, we jumped by 10x. So whenever we add, when we added the pot point of sale, we had a wallet, right? A regular wallet, uh, which provided the utility. Then we've added the point of sale interface to Breeze. Then we jumped in 10x. Uh, we grew by order of magnitude just because we added a new utility to Breeze, a new experience to Breeze. Then we've added podcasting to Breeze, we grew by another 10x. So whenever we added utility to the application, and that's what users want, that's what users need, uh, we grew in, 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 in the number of users and in the number of transactions. And, and it's because users don't care. They don't care about Bitcoin as money so much as they care about the utility it provides. If, they, if Bitcoin enables them to accept payments without a bank account, they care. If Bitcoin enables them to send funds to their favorite podcasters, they care. And that's the way we want to, uh, to go about adopting Bitcoin. Uh, you can go in the rabbit hole and you can try and educate uh, people about uh, sound money, about hard money, uh, take them hand by hand uh, in, down the rabbit hole, but it doesn't scale. However, if we'll provide users with utility and what Lightning provides is a different utility th than what Fiat uh, can provide, then users will come to Lightning and will come to Bitcoin. 
and 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 adoption will grow but we need to make sure we're we're, we're doing bitcoin meaning we need to make sure we're doing non-custodial peer-to-peer bitcoin and not custodial solutions because what they can do with custodial solution it's feasible to do with fiat solutions as well yeah, well said. Well said. Um, and so, as you mentioned, there trampoline routing might be part of the answer there around you know, this yes. idea of um, that. And so, trampoline routing was mentioned at the recent uh, Lightning Developer Protocol Developer uh, meeting. And so, there was a bunch of things they mentioned there. Uh, and for listeners, Laulu did uh, an email summary email. Uh, and uh, Bitcoin Optech did a summary of that. So if people are interested, they can see that. I'll, I'll put the link in the show notes for people there. But they talked about uh, a bunch of things, taproot channels, gossip, lightning network gossip updates, uh, blinded paths, trampoline routing, and a little bit of discussion about Bolt 12 as well. So I think all of these ideas yep. are really interesting. And we're seeing some really interesting ways of interacting and using lightning. And I probably, you know, LNURL is another example. And I know uh, I was playing around with the wallet, so I know it with Breeze. So I know you have LNURL, which is also really fascinating as well, because you can go and sign up with a website and use the different uh, features there. So can you tell us a little bit about your experience there with LNURL and Breeze? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just to, to to summarize our previous discussion, there are several protocol enhancements that are needed in order to implement a asynchronous payment. So you need the blind path, you need a trampoline routing, you need what Matt calls mailbox, like the, the ability to hold and, and release uh, payments. And Bolt Wealth probably going to be baked into the solution as well. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing that uh, if you guys, uh, if the listeners are going to uh, read about uh, read the, the, the summary that Lalu created, splicing is also something that I'm really, really looking forward to because uh, splicing, splice in, splice out, the way to manage liquidity in in as an LSP as a routing node is is key to the development yeah. of Lightning. Actually, actually, let's talk let's talk about splicing a bit more. So um, maybe if you could just explain wh- what splicing is for let's say the newer listeners and just kind of talk a little bit about some of the trade offs around that. Yeah, definitely. So splicing is the way to uh, to increase or decrease the channel cap- uh, capacity by doing another on-chain transaction. So let's say I have a 1 million Satoshi channel between uh, between a Breeze user and the Breeze LSP. So you can receive payments up to 1 million Satoshi in a single channel. Uh, what we do now in Breeze, if you want to get another 1 million uh, Satoshi, you want to receive another 1 million Satoshi, you need to open another channel with another 1 million uh, Satoshi channel. And then you have uh, two channels each of them are one is a one million satoshi. Uh, when you close that these channels, then you need to close two channels. Uh, so you have uh, four uh, four on chain transactions in total. So one for opening the channels and one for closing uh, the channels. Uh, with splicing, you can dynamically increase your existing channel capacity in order to receive more funds. So let's say you have 1 million Satoshi channel uh, capacity and you want to receive another another million, then you can just increase the existing channel by a million. When you close the channel, it's just one transaction to close uh, the channels. Uh, but that's not really what's cool about splicing. That's splice in. Splice in the ability to uh, increase the, the channel capacity. Uh, splice out the ability to decrease the channel capacity. So let's say now as a user, you have your 2 million Satoshis and you decide to buy your uh, your friends, your girlfriend a present uh, for Valentine's Day. Uh, uh, you decide to be uh, larger than life and spend 2 million Satoshi on your girlfriend. Now you have an, uh, an empty channel. Uh, two, uh, uh, 2 million Satoshi empty channels, but the channel isn't empty because really the 2 million Satoshis are on the LSP side. Uh, 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 and the funds are really locked. Breeze, as an LSP, can't use the, the these 2 million Satoshis that uh, are on our side without closing the channel. However, with splicing, we'll be able to splice out the channel and decrease the channel capacity and reuse some of the funds that are locked on our side in order to manage our liquidity better. So instead of uh, living with a situation where all the liquidity or a lot of the liquidity is locked on our side, we'll be able to reuse 
this liquidity in a more dynamic fashion without closing uh, people's channels. And I think it's a huge uh, UX improvement in, in two ways. One, uh, one, it will enable us to, uh, uh, to manage the liquidity much, much better. And secondly, uh, it will enable us to manage our cost better because we want to get to a point where every user is just one UTXO, uh, ideally. Uh, and and maybe we won't be able to to get to that, but uh, but uh, splicing is a way to minimize the number of UTXOs per uh, per user, which meaning which means reducing costs as a, as an LSP as a Lightning operator. That's a really interesting statement of the problem because, as you were saying, this idea of let's have, if if possible, if technically feasible, every user being one UTXO as opposed to the current model today where many users today who are non-custodial users might have many UTXOs. And especially if they are using CoinJoin and other features like this, then they may have a lot of coins. Uh, and then on the other hand, you've got a lot of exchanges who have maybe one, or, you know, or um, obviously they have a lot of UTXOs too, but they might have a lot of users represented way more than that. Uh, so way more than the number of UTXOs. So it's kind of interesting. But as you're saying, this idea of scaling Bitcoin and Lightning in a non-custodial way we're trying to get more efficiency. And so splicing is one of the ways to help get that efficiency, uh, both for both at a Bitcoin network level and also for you as a business, Breeze, to not have exactly. to have your capital tied up with all of the different uh, wallet users, the Breeze users, let's say. Um, and so this allows you to sort of splice out and be more efficient with the capital cost. And so I think that's also an interesting conversation as well about what kind of capital costs it takes to let's say run a lightning service today and it's almost like with technical innovation it can actually lower your capital cost or the required cost let's say yes yes uh, definitely so uh, so the ability to the ability to batch transactions uh, the ability the, for example there's a there's a package relay uh, a proposal from from gloria where you can uh, you'll be able to gloria. close the channel in a much more yeah in a much more uh, uh, cost uh, cost sensitive uh, way meaning you'll be able to to close a channel in a, a one satoshi per byte for example and then uh, and send it to the mempool and then you'll be able to bump the transaction if needed. But if not, in an optimal manner, you'll be able to close the channel in a very low cost fee. Most of the Lightning Node operation from a breeze, like you, you need to d differentiate be between a typical uh, routing node and, and an LSP. LSP, a lot of the services that uh, they provide is around opening and closing channels. So fees, transaction fees, are a large part of uh, the operating cost. Is, and, and we talked about UTXO, but we didn't we, we didn't mention that you can have multiple UTXOs in a single Bitcoin transaction. So one part of the job is to to do that uh, to get to a point where you be, you are able to batch as many UTXOs into a single uh, transaction, both for opening channels and for uh, closing channels. Uh, uh, and, 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 and liquidity management, meaning there's always cost. If you're not allocating your liquidity properly, meaning if you're not uh, generating enough routing, routing fees from the liquidity that you are locking in your node, then you're not doing your job as a lightning operator. Uh, the this, this, this sauce, the secret sauce about managing your routing node uh, is about allocating your liquidity properly for it to generate the maximum the maximum yield that it can generate, and that meaning that means always dynamically allocating the liquidity to the place uh, the liquidity is mostly needed. How do you know the liquidity is mostly needed? Because that means the users are active. If their users are active, it means they route payment through using your liquidity. Uh, which translate to routing fees. Uh, so traffic uh, generate yields, and you need to put your liquidity where where there's traffic, and that means constantly changing the the liquidity map, the liquidity allocation in your node. 
Right. And the general idea being you want to have it in the direction that people are paying to, so then they want to use your channel and then they're paying your routing fee for that. And so that's kind of, I guess, one general way to think about it. And so... Yeah, it just it, it just is very fascinating to think about where it's all going because I had a recent episode with uh, zero fee routing and he has a very interesting model, right? Because it's a very upfront yeah. model. People pay him upfront for a channel, but then it's actually zero fees. So his theory yeah. is kind of like merchants will be the ones who pay those fees because it's like, you know, in the same way that when you go to a, a mall, they pay for certain facilities or, to kind of make it good for customers to go there right like whether there's you know toilets there or air conditioning there or things like that so i guess in in his model he's thinking of it like merchants are going to pay that fee and end users won't or it'll obviously be calculated into the cost of what you're buying um but i i'm curious how that works uh and how you're seeing that or do you see it more like it'll be more about the uh ppm fee that people are charging just to route on the lightning network yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. I, I understand where zero fee routing is coming from, and I think he sees a channel as a as an object, as an entity where you that users can buy and reuse uh, later. I think the the if if we want to do lightning at scale, channels in in a way need to be obfuscated, so users don't need to know about uh, channels. So they don't need to know they are buying the ability to receive payments. I think that's, that's, that's a bit clunky and it creates a user experience friction. I think uh, there is a built-in mechanism in Lightning, which is routing fees, to provide the incentives or to, 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 to provide incentives for Lightning node operators. And I'm, I, I, I still, like you can create an, a, a Every every business model that you want uh, when it comes to when it comes to lightning because lightning you can create create uh, uh, create anything on top of uh, lightning but I think the the built-in incentives are there for a reason because it's really the it's really the the, the way to measure your value, meaning, what, what do I mean? I mean, if you did a, 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 a good job in liquidity allocation, it means that people are using your service. Is It means that people find value in your service. If people find value in your so service, you should be able to monetize it, not just one time, but monetize it as a service. Uh, so you can do that either by subscription, for example, but why not using routing fees? If routing fees are baked into the, the, the platform, routing fees are a way to manifest the value to, that you bring in the network. So uh, I, I still think that routing fees are the way to go, but I see, I see, I see reason to, to, I see reason to play with other models like zero fear uh, routing. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting model and I'm following what he's, he does uh, very closely. Yeah, right, of course. And it's, it's not like the two approaches are 100% wholly in conflict. It may well be that uh, you're both right in your own way and that, uh, you know, generally there are fees on the Lightning Network per, you know, on the channel at the PPM yeah. fee, right? The, uh, but there may be some actors within the Lightning Network who have their own business model that operates in a different way and they're just charging like an upfront fee for service and that's just a different model. Um, so yeah. it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, and I think the other point as well, um, just coming back to the splicing, I was just thinking as well, it's sort of going back to this idea where, if we really want to maximize the possible scalability of Bitcoin, the idea is every on-chain transaction, or maybe not every, but the idea is the more on-chain transactions that are doing some channel work at the same time, then that's being more efficient, right? So as an yep. example, uh, if, I don't know, just picking random numbers or kind of back of the envelope numbers, let's say every block is something like 2,000 or 3,000 transactions, and the maximum number of transactions per day is something on the order of 400,000, maybe 500,000, something like that, roughly then that only means you can open 400,000 channels a day or 500, yep. you know, and that's the maximum, right? Yep, uh, and if yep. we've got 8 billion people, we're just nowhere near, we're nowhere near the right numbers, like in, in terms of everybody being able to do that. But at least if we're getting more efficiency with splicing and being able to batch things across multiple uh, participants in one go, then at least we're getting closer to that 
uh, maximum and that uh, better scalability aspect. But I'm curious if you have any reflections on on that idea. Yeah, it's 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 also changes the 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 paradigm for, for from number of transactions to the block size, right? Because if you think that you can batch a multiple UTXOs in a single transaction, then it becomes how a, a game of how you how many UTXOs you can you can you can batch into into a transaction in that way optimize uh, optimize uh, your business but your cons- your constraints become the block size uh, uh, so i think i think uh, i think that's also important to 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 look uh, to look on the actually on the on the block size and not really on number of uh, uh, transactions that you can you can do you can execute uh, correct I, I think I think uh, going forward, I, I, like uh, there's always this fad of uh, you can't onboard uh, eight billion people to Bitcoin because uh, because of the blockchain constraints. Well, uh, I I will live with that uh, constraint, and and the Lightning doesn't solve all Bitcoin scalability issues, and we are by design uh, are constrained by the blockchain constraint. I don't know if uh, if in a few years we'll be able to uh, to uh, if we want to uh, increase the block size or not. I don't care. I think the 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 numbers right now are are working for onboarding. So I think if we'll be able to onboard uh, the uh, one billion people in a time span of five years, I I I I'm good with that. Like uh, I will sleep uh, well at night if that's the case. <laughs> right, and to be clear, as I said, uh, those back of the envelope numbers, like let's say four hundred thousand transactions a day, one transaction can have multiple outputs. And so, if you if you're doing like multi-channel opens in one transaction, then the numbers change a little bit. But then it's kind of yeah. like for each user, they still need to do some on-chain management, right? Like if yeah. they are receiving and spending, and let's say they might, on average, need to do a transaction to sort of you know uh, loop in or out, or to sort of uh, splice in or out, um, but hopefully the idea is the LSP level could batch that across multiple users, exactly. and then maybe that, that's where we're getting more. We're kind of getting more bang for our buck here, and we're, we're you know getting engineering technical innovation that really takes us further. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting to see what happens with it. Of course, those are kind of the end end game. Let's say numbers. Of course, we're still a long way from that today in terms of non custodial users, but of course we're, we're sort of beginning with the end in mind and. Um, I, I'm excited to see the network effects grow over time because I think it's it's the same kind of idea, right? Like people might not want to sign up for an email unless they know there's lots of other people they can email. And in the same way, they might think, oh, why bother with this Bitcoin or Lightning thing unless there's already a lot of Lightning merchants and Lightning people who they can use it with today. And that's really just the process of Bitcoin adoption is getting more and more people onboarded. Um, yeah. No. And, and, so, and and focus on yeah, the value proposition. Uh, we need to focus on the value proposition. I think that I think that's the if there one uh, takeaway I want you to take from this uh, episode is focus on the value propositions because people don't care. People don't care about Bitcoin, unfortunately. People don't care about Lightning, unfortunately. I mean, most people. People don't. They care just about the utility it provides. They do care if that it enables them to become a merchant without a bank account. They do care if it provides them with, in, a, in a new way to interact with money, meaning stream satoshis or execute micropayment or earn earn uh, earn money on micro tasks. Uh, that's that's where they care, and that's why they care. Uh, so provide value like any other service. Bitcoin needs to provide value. When we'll be able to provide value, then then will Bitcoin will get adopted. Fantastic. Well, I think that's a great spot to finish. Roy, where can people find you and where can they find Breeze online? Uh, they can find us at uh, breeze.technology online. They can find us at Twitter, breeze underscore tech. They can find us, they can follow us on Medium, uh, Breeze Technology Publication. Uh, we are, uh, Breeze, I forgot to mention, is completely open source. So we welcome everyone to look take a look at our GitHub uh, repository. Everything end-to-end, including our server, everything is uh, open source. So we welcome PRs and contribution and, and scrutiny uh, from, from listeners. 
Uh, and you can find me, you can find me easily. Just Google my name. Fantastic. Well, I really enjoyed chatting with you, Roy. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you.